Good morning again. It, it's good to be with you all this morning. Uh, bef- uh, you know, as a guest, you're never quite sure how a congregation works, you know, the kind of the culture of the congregation. So I want to just ask you a question this morning. Um, and uh, that question is, as I'm reading this scripture, which of the characters do you identify with most or do you identify with? So the characters, it's going to be a mom. Do have any moms here this morning? <laughs> so, so, so we got a mom, and she's the mother of what you will be hearing as the sons of Zebedee. And this is uh, James and John. We, we tend to know them as. And then shortly after that, Jesus breaks in, and maybe Jesus is a little tough this morning. Um, and then the disciples, so, uh, or the rest of the disciples. So I may ask you uh, for volunteers afterwards. So um, if you'll listen for the word of the Lord as found in Matthew 20, 20 through 28. Then the mother of the Zebedee's sons came to Jesus along with, along with her sons. Bowing before him, she asked a favor of him. What do you want? He said, that is Jesus asked. She responded, say that these sons of mine will sit one on your right hand and one on your left in your kingdom. Jesus replied, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink from the cup that I am about to drink from? Then she said to him, then they said to him, we can. He said to them, you will drink from my cup. But to sit at my right or left hand isn't mine to give. It belongs to those for whom my father prepared it. Now, when the other ten disciples heard this, they they became angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them over and said, You know that those who rule the Gentiles show show off their authority over them And their high-ranking officials order them about. But that's not the way it will be with you. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be your slave. Just as the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and give his life to liberate many people. This is the word of the Lord. So, any volunteers? Who do you identify with? Who who resonates? You say, "Oh, yeah, that's me." Okay, you got me. Well, um, if it were if it were an animal question, I might get some responses. Maybe <laughs> for me, it's it's um, it's got to be the disciples, right? The angry disciples. Um, I tend to think I know better than to ask to be first in line, you know, to be sitting in power with Jesus. That doesn't seem like my place. But if someone else gets the idea about bossing me around, I'm right with the disciples. You know, what are they doing? In today's lesson, the disciples see themselves, it turns out, as competing with one another, right? Right? Who gets to be in power with Jesus? That is, they're competing with other followers of Jesus for positions of power. To see, in other words, who can be the greatest of all time. Are you guys familiar with this expression, greatest of all time, it became popular a while back? Goat, you know, is it Coach K, the greatest coach of all time? Is LeBron the greatest? You get the idea. Um, It seems odd, though, doesn't it? On a more serious note, that faith itself can become a source of tension, rivalry. My own sense is that today in our world, there's not so much rivalry among Christians. Now, I'm, I'm curious how you feel about this. 
but that's my sense. And instead, the competition that people feel tends to be with other religions and people of other religions. Now, how this happens, you know, isn't exactly clear. I'm not here to talk about how that happens, but it seems in our world today, we see Christians, some Christians can become suspicious or even resentful of other people of faith. Now, I'm sure this isn't news to you because you recall the stories from this past summer and before of a series of attacks on religious communities, right? There have been attacks at churches, mosques, synagogues. Just a couple of hours from here in Pittsburgh, there was the attack at the Tree of Life synagogue, you'll remember. The perpetrator there had online compared Jews with Satan. In the case of the attack in San Diego at the Pow Wei Synagogue, the perpetrator was a Christian, self-identified, and even a Presbyterian Christian. And he claimed he was worried about members of the Jewish religion threatening to replace Christians. Now, I don't know about you, when this news, this kind of news hits, on those days, on those mornings, I find myself saying, what kind of crazy world is this? I mean, can you imagine what people are thinking? But for me, I think today, this scripture asks, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus in this kind of world? What does it look like to be faithful in such a world? Now, our society, I think, is going to give us at least two different messages. One message that we sometimes hear is, be wary. It's a scary world. There are strange religions out there, keep your distance. Another message goes something like this. In a diverse world, it is important to respect our differences and tolerate one another. Now, to be honest, I'd much rather see folks be respectful than wary. That's just my, you know, kind of bias. I'd rather live in a respectful world than a wary one. But today, Jesus, I think, comes to me and it dawns on me that both wariness and kind of respect, they can both keep a healthy or safe distance from the other. I respect you, just you stay over there. And then this morning, we hear a different answer from Jesus. What is his answer? word. Jesus calls us to be servants. The thing about servants is that they don't keep their distance. To serve others, we've got to get close to them. We've got to be willing to spend time with them and to give of ourselves. Now, if that's not hard enough in this kind of world, Jesus doesn't call us to do a little bit of service now and then as if faith were a part-time job. No, He calls us to a life of service. A life of service. That is, He calls us to give our lives serving others. That's here at church, at home, in our work, everywhere we go. Everything we do, everyone we meet, all the time, all the time. 
In an age, friends, of religious resentment and violence, Christ calls the church to do what? Be servants! To be servants! What? That, that's a hard word. Might it be that God is calling us this morning to be servants, even or perhaps especially to people of other faiths, people of different worldviews? Could it be? What might this even look like? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I don't think the form of service is our biggest challenge. I really don't. You're creative people. You've got a lot going on here. You're going to have 400 people coming by here in any day now. Right? You've got two services. You've got, you got a lot going on here. My biggest challenge, anyway, is that, to be frank, I'm wary of giving up control. Rather than be a servant, I'd prefer to keep a safe distance and to do things my own way. You know, all that relational stuff. Hmm. Sure, I might be willing to do a little service now and then, but nothing so bold as to be a servant. That's my story. At least until I hear Jesus calling to me. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be your slave. How about you? What's your story? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.